Having trouble saving some of your guests? Stay tuned, I'm about to show you how to save everyone in the mansion. First up is Reginald Sixpence. From our starting area, we're gonna spy on Reggie rummaging through the safe. Now while he doesn't find what he was looking for, he does manage to knock a blank cartridge down on the floor. Pick it up and take it across the hall to load into the gun that's hanging on the wall. Once that's done, we'll automatically be sent to the chapel, where things turn out a lot better for Reginald than they did the first time we were here. After that cutscene, we'll awaken in the grand lobby and ballroom. Our mission now is to save the brute in a suit and the moth by moonlight. Starting from the casino clock, head into the room with the gaming tables, then go down the hall all the way to the last door on the left. In here, we'll find the key code for the CCTV panels. Now, we also want to set the camera feed so that it's shown on the main casino screen. Go back to the room with the gaming tables and use the key code on the wall to turn off camera 2. Then we're going to go in the next room and use the key code again to turn camera 3 on. Once that's done, Clay will see that Trinity's in trouble. He'll leave the card table and rush in to save her from being spider food. After that, it's on to the guest rooms to save Willow Blue. We'll pick things up from the room with the gaming tables where we want to spy on the floor of hearts. Use Trinity's new super hearing ability to learn that the door key code is 5564. Once the area is clear, we can use this door key code to enter the hallway. Head down all the way to the end of the hallway and then upstairs into the guest room area. Our first guest room is home to a strange creature and contains the guest room's winding key. Gonna use the winding key to activate the clock in this area so that when we restart the day, we'll restart right here. Next, pull out our pocket watch to advance time to 8 p.m. in the evening. Then we can go into the area with the bell and get the bone key from off the wall. Note that the bone key won't appear until after Willow is dead, which is why we advance time to 8 p.m. Use the bone key to unlock the desk so that we can learn the Hungry Charm recipe. Then go ahead and restart the day. Once we're back at noon, we're gonna head left to pick up the Hungry Charm and then feed it to this creature in the tank to the right. Doing so will transform the Hungry Charm into a Fed Hungry Charm. Next, head back to the room where we got the winding key and transform the Fed Hungry Charm into a Sated Hungry Charm. After that, we're gonna head next door where we can see that Willow's a little worried. One, about missing the charm, and two, that she doesn't have the charm recipe in her desk any longer. After three, she's gonna head in here, so make sure you spy or find a place to hide so we can discover the hidden passage behind the painting. Use the sated hungry charm to unseal the door and then head upstairs to flip the switch. Doing so will disrupt whatever dark magic had a hold on Willow and cause her to change her mind. Fifth on the guest list is the Southern Siren, Miss Tequila Bell. To get to the music rooms, we'll head left past Willow's room and continue down the hall. In this room, we'll use Willow's mask to talk to the ghosts that are blocking our way. Next to the room with the turntable, we'll find the music room's winding key. Use it to activate the clock, then go ahead and restart the day. From the clock, we'll go left and take the purple vinyl record off the turntable. Next, head back to the room with the clock and continue east towards the storage closet. Once inside the closet, we'll put the record on the closet turntable. Doing so will cause the seven of clubs to notice the record playing. He'll leave the piano to go turn it off. When he's out of the room, that's our cue to go in and take the storage closet key from off the piano. Use it to lock him in the closet. Once he's out of commission, Tequila will sing us a song and we'll begin our mission to save Grayson and Red. After the cutscene, we'll wake up in this room and head east to spy on the dynamic duo. Turns out they're hunting for an incredible but not so edible egg. In the next room, the Lightfinger locksmith will be disappointed to find the egg is not in the wall safe. Once they're gone, grab the lighter from the wall safe and bring it back to the room where we started. Just before 4 o'clock, a ghost will appear and stay for one hour. Light the candle so that we can talk to him, and he'll tell us about a secret switch behind the theater bookshelf. Head back to the room where we got our lighter, and we'll find the power switch. The first switch shows that the power is off, but if we go to the bookshelf like the ghost told us, we'll see the secret switch. Head back to the stage area, and since we have a little time to kill, feel free to hang out and watch a bit of the show. Once Red leaves, that's our cue to do the same. Head left to the power switch and turn it off. Rescuing Grayson will give us new lockpicking powers, which are gonna come in handy as we save Thanos and Aram. To get to the next area, head back to the stage. Inside the cage, we'll see a lock trap door that we can open now that we have Grayson's special ability. Follow this path along the basement to get to the ladder, which will take us up to the bar area. 
Inside the What's Your Poison bar, take note of the record that's playing on the turntable and the ghost that's guarding the door that requires a password. We'll be coming back in just a bit to deal with all of that, but for now, we're gonna head towards the library so that we can get the winding key for this area. Use Grayson's ability to pick the lock outside the door, then head upstairs. In this hallway, we're gonna go into the room all the way at the bottom of the screen, and next door, we'll find the library winding key. We're gonna use that key to activate the clock in the grand lobby and ballroom. Take the winding key there, and then use your pocket watch to restart the day at noon. Now that we've got a fresh 12 hours to work with, head back to the library and take note of the table that's sitting directly under the chandelier in the middle. Head back upstairs, but this time enter the room across the hall from where we went last time. From here, we'll use Tequila's ability to shatter the glass and cause a candle to fall down on the table. Probably guess what we're gonna do with that. Head back to the first floor, light the candle, and now we can talk to a very pervy ghost who will tell us the secret of the bookshelf located along the far wall. Use this knowledge to get to the heaven and hell staircase. Here we'll find yet another clock that needs yet another winding key. Thankfully, this is the last one. And if you're wondering why we're spending so much time to find these keys, it's because there's certain events in this area that we'd otherwise miss if we arrived later coming from another clock in the house. Follow the path shown to get the heaven and hell winding key, take it back to the clock, activate, restart, you know the drill. Okay, so from the heaven and hell clock, we can finally start saving Thanos and Aram. Head towards the dining room and pull back the curtain on the wall to reveal a secret people. Around 2 o'clock, we'll spy on the Three of Hearts and see that he's going into the dining room with a hidden statue arm. Look through the people to see that he's stowing it inside the dumbwaiter. Once we've seen that, we can go ahead and restart the day. But before doing that, it's a good idea to activate the clock in the Grand Lobby and Ballroom. That way we start there. That'll give us a little bit of extra time for what we need to do next. Ignore Thanos and Arm and head directly into the bar. There, we need to light the candle so that the ghosts appear. Also take the record off the turntable so that we can hear the conversation and then find a place to hide. All before Aram comes in at 1 o'clock. Now you see why we wanted that extra time. Listen in on the conversation and learn that the password to the door is Eleanor. Give the password to the ghost and once the room is clear, go in and pull the handle on the slot machine until it turns green. One down, two to go. Next, we're gonna head towards the library where we'll see another slot machine. Now you can go ahead and activate it now, but Aram's just gonna come back later in the day and switch it over. So if you want, you can just leave it for now. So remember that statue arm we saw get hidden in the dumbwaiter? Well, it's time to go get that bad boy out. Head into the dining room, open up the dumbwaiter, and pull out the statue arm. Next, we're gonna go into the room where the peephole is and go into the room behind it. Attach the statue arm to the slot machine and pull the handle until it lights up green. Now, technically, we should be seeing the cutscene right now because every single slot machine in the mansion is already set to heart. But like I said, Aram's gonna come back and change that one right there. So we just have to wait for him to do it. While I'm over here though, I just wanna point out there is a slot machine here in the grand lobby and ballroom. That's probably already set to hearts, but just in case it isn't, make sure it is. Now that Aram's done change this, we'll change it back just like that. We have saved them from being burnt to a crisp. And you know what that means. There's only one more guest in the mansion that we have to save. Now since it is the last one, it's gonna take a bit longer, but we got this. We're just gonna break everything down step by step like we've been doing until we're done. So from the room with the giant tree, we wanna head to the left, go all the way down the hall into what appears to be the set of a primetime medical drama. Activate the machines in the order shown on the screen. So it's the one on the top left, one right next to it, bottom right, bottom left, and finally the one next to the patient's bed. Doing so will light up the first connection to the tree. The next puzzle we're presented with involves giving water to a sapling, restarting the day, coming back, doing it all over again. Two more times, so a total of three goblets of water. Once that's done, the red connection will light up, and now we just have to light up the one connection on the right side of the tree. From the starting area, we're gonna skip our usual route and instead head into this kitchen area. Inside the dumbwaiter, we should find the statue arm. If it's not there, you're gonna have to go back upstairs and get it from the dumbwaiter in the dining room. You can use this door here if you need to go upstairs. Once you have the statue arm, head back towards the tree and this time go to the right. Attach the statue arm, pull it down until it lights up green, and a hidden door will be revealed. Go through the door to enter a graveyard. Pick up the red flower and swap the red flower for the purple one on Aram's grave. Then trade again to get the light gray flower and the gold flower. Finally, swap the gold flower to get the red one back and give that to Eleanor. 
Now that the flowers have been arranged, all three connections to the tree are lit, and we can go inside the door. After a short cutscene, we'll be given the sapphire tear ring, and sent back to the elevator where we started. Now that we have the ring, we can get inside the smaller house that's just outside the mansion. To get back upstairs, follow this path, going up the ladder, through the bar, and finally into the grand lobby and ballroom. It's fitting that Tequila's here because we're about to use her singing power to smash the stained glass window. Head down through the garden into the smaller house and use the sapphire tear ring to get inside the door. After a cutscene, we'll respawn in the mansion, only to find it all on fire. Go into the casino and activate the clock. Once there, restart the day and exit the mansion, going through the bar, then the grand lobby, and finally through the hole that we made breaking the stained glass window. Ignore any flaming garden gnomes and head directly to the small house, where we'll be given the ruby heart ring and Eleanor's mask. After the cutscene, we'll awaken by the heaven and hell clock with instructions to head upstairs through this set of double doors. This will take us back to the chapel area, hey, you remember, where we started the game. Only this time, instead of saving Reginald Sixpence, we're gonna march directly into the chapel and smash this giant stained glass window. After another cutscene, we'll end up in this room, attach the pocket watch to the bomb, and use the watch to restart the day. Doing so will take us to this little workshop area. Pick up arms, wire cutters, and use them to cut a wire on the bomb. Doing so will automatically save Lucas, our final guest, and reveal the ending of the game. Alright, so that's gonna do it for this guide, but before you go back to doing whatever it is you're doing today, I just got one small favor for you, and that's to show some support for Cavalier Games and Tequila Works. Now granted, you probably already bought the game, that's why you're looking up a guide video, so you already supported them that way. That's great. But if you have friends that don't know about this game, let them know about it, because they need to jump on it, get on social media, send a Facebook, tweet, Insta, whatever the kids are doing these days, get on Steam, leave them a nice positive review, because any company making games this good, I want them to keep making games. I'm excited about whatever their next project's gonna be, and I'm loving this. Obviously, there's way more to the game than I covered in this little short video, but I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.